Since 2004, several domestic manufacturers have begun switching to pulse width driven fuel systems. This is a 2005 Mercury Grand Marquis. It is a typical example of a pulse width driven fuel system. And we're going to talk about some of the components in the system and their function. On a pulse width modulated system, you'll only find one fuel line going to the fuel rail. There is no return line as this is a single line system. Also, you'll notice on the fuel rail there is a pressure sensor. What this does is it monitors fuel rail pressure and sends a signal to your ECM telling the fuel rail pressure. Sometimes this gets confused as a pressure regulator. You'll notice that there is a vacuum line going to this sensor. This is a safety function that's engineered into the system. As with most Ford systems, you're going to have an inertia switch in the system. On this vehicle, the inertia switch is here in the trunk. Also, we have a fuel pump driver module. These can be located in the trunk. Uh, some of them are located on the frame. Refer to the owner's manual to determine the location. On a typical Ford pulse width modulated fuel system, the ECM monitors fuel rail pressure by the fuel rail pressure sensor. At that point, the ECM determines fuel rail pressure by looking at engine load and RPMs. When it determines the correct fuel rail pressure needed, it sends a duty cycle signal to your driver module. And then the driver module duty cycles the pump to control rail pressure. This duty cycle signal is not a variable voltage. This is a full on, full off voltage, thus controlling pump speed, controlling pump pressure. Unlike the Ford system, the GM system does not have a pressure sensor on the fuel rail. All we have is the inlet line from the tank. The pressure sensor is actually under the vehicle. Also, we have a fuel pump driver module. The GM application is very similar to the Ford application, with one exception. In the Ford application, the ECM monitors fuel rail pressure and then demands a fuel pressure from the driver module. In the GM application, the ECM tells the driver module what fuel rail pressure it wants, and the driver module then controls fuel pump to control pressure in the fuel rail. This particular vehicle has a GDI system on it, which is gasoline direct injection. The unique thing about this system is it also has a pulse width modulated system that supplies fuel to the GDI system. Up to this point where this line connects to the high pressure GDI pump, from here back, it is basically the same as the pulse width modulated system we've looked at earlier. From here, it becomes drastically different. Fuel comes into this high pressure pump, which is bolted to the head. This pump is actually driven off the end of the cam. Also, we have a fuel rail pressure regulator here, which is a duty cycled valve. From here, the fuel comes into this high pressure line into the fuel rail. The GDI pump generates extreme fuel pressures. The fuel pressure in the high pressure line can run anywhere from 2,900 PSI to 3,200 PSI. Because of these high pressures, always use extreme caution in doing any service work to the GDI portion of this system. Because of these systems using several different duty cycled signals to control the fuel pressure and delivery, a normal digital volt ohm meter is not the appropriate tool to do the electronic diagnosis. The proper tool to diagnose the driver module is a lab scope. The information we obtain by using a lab scope is invaluable in diagnosing the fuel system. Now with the vehicle running, we can monitor the signal coming from the ECM and also the signal controlling the fuel pump speed. For example, we can determine the voltage, peak voltage on the fuel pump, which we can see is 14.42 volts. Also we can see the peak voltage on the signal coming from the ECM, which is a 4.83 volt. Also we can measure the on time in the signal, which we can see is 1.22 milliseconds. By analyzing the patterns, you're able to see irregularities that may be causing a drivability issue. Because of the complexity of the systems, without the proper equipment, it's very easy to misdiagnose components.